Alan Dooley from Concierge Golf, and I am in conversation today with Fiona Toher, is who is GM at Karen Golf Links. And Karen Golf Links is a fantastic 27 hole golf course, course located on the uh, geez, and out in the west uh, in Belmullet, which is a bit of a trip away. They talk about the Waterville being secluded, but I think perhaps Karen might beat the, beat Waterville on that. But anyway, at, with, with, without saying any, anything. Uh, Further, I would, as I say, I'd like to introduce Fiona, and Fiona's going. We're going to have a chat about Karen Golf Links and how wonderful the course is, and really, really, and truly, it is definitely a golf course that people should have on their list of courses to play when they come to Ireland, without a shadow of a doubt. Fiona, hello, how are you, and how are things up in the west? Hi, John. Lovely, delighted to be here today with chat, and thank you very much for the opportunity. The thing, how are things here in the West? Looking out the window, a bit windy, a bit wild, a bit wet. Um, <laughs> that's half of the course, as they say, this time of year. Um, yeah, so. Indeed. Big question, Fiona, is um, that doesn't, I mean, your accent doesn't sound too too local, if you don't mind me saying. How did you end up in, in Karen Golf Links? Okay, so no, my accent isn't local. I was actually brought up in London, but my parents are from Belmarlet, which is the nearest town to Khan. So I've been coming back here on holiday since I was tiny, every year, every summer, shipped off from London, back to Balmarlet for seven or eight weeks. And we loved it. And then around 21, 22 years ago, I decided to come back for good. So I moved back here. And four years ago, then I was offered the job as GM. So I took it. So that's how I ended up in Khan Golfing. Excellent. So, um, I mean, as, as, as I recall, going through some of the information, is that the golf course was built uh, in 1990, or started being built in 1992. Is the, what, what history, I know there's a bit there also from Bell Mullet Golf Club, which wouldn't be too far away. What would be the history then of both golf courses as such to become one? Okay, so Khan, I suppose a group of local businessmen got together um, in the mid-1980s in Balmala, and they were looking at the time, the middle of a really hard recession at the time, a lot of immigration, emigration from the area, and they were looking how to retain some of the younger people, how to generate jobs and really give a kickstart to the local economy. So they started looking at tourism, local economy, and they came out, a couple of them were very into their golf, um, and they identified the piece of land that's now Khan Golf Links as some as a potential development. And um, at the time it was land that was owned by the local farmers as hominage. So there was a process, I think, at the time where they were striping the commonage and subdividing it up and giving it out to people. So prior to that happening, um, they wanted to, to actually purchase the land. So they set up a development company called Chisurek Eris Cho, which is Eris Tourism. And it's about more than just the golf club. It's about developing tourism in the Eris region, which is this part of North Mayo, um, and promoting it for inward investment. So they did, um, got together, managed to purchase some of the land and some of the farmers gave them the land indeed. Um, and it started off from very humble roots. Now at the time, Belmarlock Golf Club, which has been established since the early, uh, I think 1940-something, they played their golf in a nine hole course back in a place called Bally McSheeran, which is just a few kilometers up the road from Khan. And when they seen that Khan was developed into the Lynx course that it is, they asked, could they come play their golf there? So how the arrangement is that Balmarlock Golf Club play their golf, their members on a license agreement with the owners at Khan Golf Links. So that's where the connection between the two courses come. Very separate entities though. So. Um, it's really a management company that managed Khan Golf Links. Excellent, that's fantastic. Um, the the certainly the attractions. Um, looking at Karen Golf Links, the location. Okay, it might be a bit to the to the west, but when when I'd look at it from the golf tour operator side of things, and I'd look at the other courses that are in the vicinity, um, being that Sligo, Enniscrone, Karn, and 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 even. Um, if you wanted to take a drive down the coast, you could hit, hit Connemara. Um, there's a whole load of golf courses in the area. In which courses do you find that uh, 
tend to suit the the 36 hole day type of golfer or the golfer that would like to play golf every second or third day and spend a couple of weeks or maybe a week in the area? Well, we get a lot of, of golf groups, obviously international business is our core business here in Khan, and we do a lot of itineraries for a lot of different groups and we tend, they love to play the Northwest. I think the quality of golf courses here in the Northwest equals that in the South as well. Um, so we'd normally put them in a triangular kind of a loop. There's ourselves, Ennisgrown and Rosses. Um, and we also include Strand Hill in that because it's actually quite an underrated golf course. I think it's a beautiful Lynx course. It's a bit, I'd say it's a bit smaller as in probably not as tough a challenge as Rosses, ourselves or Ennisgrown. Um, but certainly if you're doing a few days golf and you want a, a easier day, we tend to slot Strand Hill in, in the middle of it. Um, and then as some of the, the tours go down, they then tend to go down south. They might do Connemara, Galway Bay, which is another lovely course. And uh, as they're heading down towards La Hinch and further down then to Valley Bunyan and the Waterville and the big courses down in the south. That's really where we go. Um, we kind of keep them in the loop. Then the other choice they have is going further north, um, going to Ballyliff and from Sligo to Ballyliff and Port Rush, Port Stewart, all around there and back down around to Dublin, ending up in County Louth. They're really the main itineraries that we do for our, the guys that come here. Excellent. And for, and just if it, as you talked about tourism for in the general area, uh, I, I, I come across couples, uh, groups, of couples, maybe just two uh, golfer, husband and wife or uh, two people. And maybe perhaps one of them isn't, or in, and in that group, there might be, let's say, uh, it could be groups of eight and four golfers and four um, non-golfers within that group of non-golfing with say types of things to do what would you recommend in the area um, it might be something that you crack in one day it might be two or three days of activity that you might decide that okay there's a bit of here around Sligo there's a bit here around uh, the Connemara Park there's a bit out here in uh, Bell Mullis and so on well, I'd say when you're coming to Khan, it's really a destination for golf. You're not passing through. So if you're coming to visit Khan, there's so much to do in the local area. I'm trying to encourage people to come to get the full experience here, to stay. We have a couple of hotels in the town, the Broadhaven and the Talbot, which are absolutely beautiful hotels, both of them, um, to stay in Balmala because, like I said, it's a, a bit of a trip to get here. So when you're here, you may as well immerse yourself in the place. Um, and we have so much locally here. We have a huge heri heritage centre in Ocklane, which is only a couple of kilometres back the road for anyone interested in looking up their Irish roots. Very helpful staff there. We have the Cager Fields, which is the oldest Neolithic settlement in Ireland, which stunning views out over Dunbrister Head, um, 70 or 80 metre, I think, high viewing platform out over the sea. An absolute must do. We've um, a looped walks, adventure sports here. Anyone who's into island hopping i'll call it we've uninhabited offshore islands here and we do a local firm yeah absolutely gorgeous well worth the trip out they're called the inishki islands you can actually see them from the golf course um they used to be inhabited and there's a whole load of history to them um, we fish in sea angling and freshwater fishing here and we also have uh, so much water sports in terms of surfing. It's really, I suppose, over the last year, that's took off hugely in the Eris region. Um, we have uh, an Irish college here called Ishka, um, and they do all of that, and they teach it through the medium of Irish. So, And we have other smaller kind of operators called Wave Sweeper, um, and they do adventure sports, basically jumping off cliffs into the sea, all sorts of things. It's really, really interesting. Um, and then we've the Greenway as well between us and Westport, um, which is a great cycling route and well worth doing. So, um, and in terms of Sligo, um, I can only speak as I know. Now in Sligo, there's obviously Ben Balban, Yates's graveyard up there. Um, so many different bits and pieces to do there. And then as you move on, the road trip, I think, from Westport to Connemara is absolutely stunning. Kylemore Abbey, the fjord down there, Killary Ford, absolutely stunning it's worth making the trip from Balmala to Westport to Connemara just for that road trip alone you won't see the likes of that scenery anywhere in Ireland it's amazing 
That's very true. I, I did. And when I played, um, I, I, the first time I played in Carn a couple of years ago, I played with uh, three fellow Canadian buddies, which are three of them are now <laughs> members of the club. <laughs> That's yeah. a different thing. <laughs> which is great uh, and I remember we drove from uh, we drove to Westport and it was the most let's say it was, it, it was a piece of landscape that you wouldn't really expect in Ireland because it's so vast um, and that and it was just so vast it, I mean the road was quite narrow uh, but it was so vast and uh, which I found very very unusual for an Irish landscape because mainly Irish landscapes rocks and hills and trees and you might get a view here not unless you're you're, you're, you're spinning around the, the the ring of Kerry or up the mountain somewhere would you get that kind of depth perception view straight across the uh, the land as such you know which I found particularly interesting and um, even just going back to the course there, I mean, that, that was the, 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 the amount of stuff of things to do. I like the idea of, of getting a, maybe four partners to jump off <laughs> to do a couple of the jumps as well. It could be very interesting well to do. Worth it. There's a small <laughs> company called Wave Sweeper, and he's also a local hotelier here, and they do amazing stuff. Well worth If you look them up on a website and you're coming to Bamala, absolutely worth doing a few things with him. Good fun. Definitely, I'd have uh, I'd have a few people definitely in mind pencil that in. <laughs> yeah, let me know. <laughs> we can get that sorted for you. No bother. <laughs> oh, absolutely, indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, so, with the the golf course in particular, um, has there been many changes to the golf course itself, or will there be any changes made in the coming years? It's in recent I times, that is. I think this year has been the biggest change that I've seen for the last, uh, since it opened really. So we had the original Hackett 18, um, history is fairly well known. Last course designed by Eddie Hackett and some say it's his best course, sorry Waterville, but that is the rumour. And um, then we had another Kilmore 9, an extra nine holes, which was developed in 2013. Um, the club never really had the resources to maintain it properly or open it, um, but we kind of looked at it and knew it was a special piece of land um, designed by Ali McIntosh and Jim Eng. So in 2018, we looked at it and we wanted to integrate it with the back nine of the original Hackett course because it's the most stunning piece of, the, of land, Dunescape. I think it's probably unparalleled anyway. I completely agree. <laughs> Yeah, we've done an integrated course and we've called it the Wild Atlantic Dunes course. We put a lot of work and effort into it in, over the last two years and it was going to have its official opening this year on the 1st of May uh, and then we got COVID. But anyway, we managed, we opened it in, um, yeah, we opened it in July when we were able to reopen to visitors and the response that we've had from people coming has just been phenomenal and it's fast overtook the Hackett course so you, you can either play the original hacker 18 or you can play the wild atlantic dunes 18 now and it's fast overtaking in popularity people are just stunned um apart from the holes themselves the actual beast of the views from it are just stunning so that's over that and that's where the irish pga pa championship will be played on it will be played over the wild atlantic dunes next year we had our annual program played on it this year and I think all the Irish pros that were present really said it's a special piece of land. And that's Brilliant. really, really what we, the feedback we've been getting. So we're very excited about it. Like I said, we've done a lot of work on it. Um, and we've also taken the opportunity this year, we've done a, a renovation on our changing rooms, a bit of work on the clubhouse, small bits, a bit more tiny stuff like that, just coming along with it. Excellent. Fiona, that's fantastic. I can't wait. To, no, that's to me is a day of 36 holes, regardless. Uh, two courses uh, up and play early in the morning, uh, play the Hackett, and the afternoon play the Wild Atlantic Dunes. Now, that depends on the legs as well. So I'm sure there's a big, healthy, hefty meal to be had at half time as well, you know? <laughs> there is our clubhouse. It's got huge business. We have a brilliant chef in there, a young lad who's come back from Australia local guy and um, yeah he's doing great things at the food there so we've got huge business coming out from town not just the golfers so I have to give him a shout out now he's uh, Kieran O'Connor he's brilliant yeah 
Oh, brilliant. We definitely we'll, yeah. we'll stick in his name in the, as a tweet tweet on this there later on. Yeah. The, 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 I was going to ask you then, with the COVID challenges, um, oh, completely with all sorts of, uh, oh, sure, I mean, everything essentially booked from international this year is, is popped into next year. Um, with online activity in particular, how did you see or, or did you put, or how did you see the, the online uh say the shop in the in the golf shop in particular did you put any did you work a bit more on the online shop uh, side of things and how has that gone for you this year we did we actually um put up a proper online portal this year <clears throat> for the merchandise and um between the pandemic diary that tom coin put out on his um on the golfers journal earlier this year with our chairman I think it just triggered a response. It was phenomenal. Um, we sold 40,000 euros worth of merchandise in two weeks um, in the middle of the pandemic, which was huge for us. Um, and the overseas life memberships between the opening of the June's course and the pandemic, we decided to do an offer on them. We've had a phenomenal um, response to that as well. Um, and that we're going to extend that actually to the end of the year, um, the special offer on that, just because of the response we've been having. Um, and then we're looking at doing a, maybe not next year, the year after, because we're so busy next year with bookings, um, maybe a week for all our international visitors and our members, just a week for them to come, basically come home to Eris, we're calling it, and we run competitions and that for them to try and get them more involved at the club as well. Fantastic. Uh, and, and as a matter of interest, how much, I, I, sh I should know off the top of my head, but I can't remember slightly, how much is the overseas membership then for life, or, or what's the, the criteria around that? Okay, so the overseas life memberships are based at the five and a half to six thousand, depending on your age um, normally, and we discounted those to three thousand this year, regardless of your age. So that's huge. It's a massive discount, offers great value. You get fantastic discounts at other golf courses in Ireland and um, it offers unlimited golf at Khan for the life of the member. Um, so like I said, it's, it's well worth taking out and looking up and it's, I suppose it offers a home base. If you're coming over to Ireland to play golf every year, it's probably the, one of the friendliest clubs in Ireland. Um, you'd be welcome to open arms here by our members and, and staff. So yeah, it's well worth thinking about. Excellent. And that's was... available on our, on our Khan golf links website oh yes 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 indeed and also one of the one of the parts there to add to that is that the various rankings that different uh, magazines would have you could certainly see that uh, Karen would be in the top 15 golf courses in Ireland ranks consistently and um, I mean the course rankings can be quite higgledy piggledy sometimes because it's, it can be very much bit driven around uh, uh, people's opinions and 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 other different factors that but, but essentially I would definitely say I mean it's easy to say that when you say golf courses in the top 20 or top 20 courses in Ireland you could bundle a whole lot of them in there and they go and it's easy to agree on there's 20 courses of this particular nature and definitely Karen would be sitting in the top bunch of hours no question from my experience anyway and I definitely can't wait to get up and play the um, when I say the I, because I, I haven't played in a while so I, I, I'm really excited about playing the the uh, the Wild Atlantic Way or, or the Wild Atlantic uh, Dunes course you should say uh, uh, travelling yes. along the Wild Atlantic Way <laughs> exactly yes. uh, well, Fiona, I think that's fantastic. I don't want to be taking up too much of your time because I know we're really, really busy at this time of year. <laughs> we really are. People think you've nothing to do coming into the window in a Lynx golf course that relies on its international visitors. That's when we do a lot of our catch-up work. So, yeah, we're pretty flat out now. Excellent. Well, that's fantastic. And uh, thank you very much for your time indeed. That was absolutely wonderful. It's been and a pleasure, John, and thank you. And I look forward to sending tons of golf court, golfers up your way in the coming years. I'm looking forward to you coming down playing it yourself now. Indeed.